You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking with Yisrael Factor. He made Aliyah about three years ago and started a business called Israel Business Brokers, which helps people buy and sell businesses in Israel. Yisrael, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Tell me, how do you help people buy a business? Well, you know, it's a pretty standard operation. First of all, what we want to do is get some clients that are looking to potentially sell their business. We will evaluate their business. We will profile them. We will put a, an angle of face on a very Israeli business, so to say, so that we can present the profile of this business to the potential alim and have those alim evaluate the business, and we will hold their hands and support them and have them ask those hard questions to the business owners until they feel that they, they have that comfort level where they understand the net cash flow of the business and then go ahead and, um, and, and pull the trigger and actually purchase the business. So when you said you evaluate a business, what do you really look for? Well, typically speaking, there's a lot of different variables that we look at when evaluating a business, how much money the business is making, how much time the business owner spends in the business, how scalable the business might be. But the bottom line is what the buyer is looking for is the return on investment. Bottom line is, if I operated this business the same way that the current business owner uh, is operating it, how much money would I put in my pocket this time next year? That's what I call the annual net cash flow. And what I, what I typically do is I take the annual net cash flow and I present that to the potential buyer and then go ahead and say, you know, on a multiple of net, sometimes it will be two times, sometimes it will be two and a half, depending on the industry. Um, that would be a fair price for the, business, uh, the, new, the new business owner, the, the buyer, to go ahead and purchase the price. I don't want you to disclose any secrets about your business, but let's say that you found a company that someone wanted to sell when you talk about a certain return on equity or cash flow that comes out of it, what sort of numbers would a buyer be looking for in today's market? Well, typically speaking, there, there are, if I understood your question properly, there's a few different numbers that a buyer is going to look at. They're going to look at the, we're not talking about very large major banks or in, uh, multi-million dollar corporations. What we're talking about is the, the mom and pop shops, the, the medium sized businesses, the typical business that you're going to see on uh, Main Street USA or Main Street Israel, uh, where people are going to purchase. The typical numbers that we look at when we evaluate a business are the gross sales, we look at the gross profit, we look at the uh, cost of goods, we look at the basic expenses, and the net cash flow. Um, based on the net cash flow of the business, we evaluate the business based and we give the business a uh, 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 an evaluation, and then we will present that evaluation com complete in, t in, in, in a file that we call a business profile that we would use as a tool to help the buyer sell and the seller pr uh, transact the business. And do you deal with more specialized companies? We sell all different types of businesses. We sell um, the mom and pop shops, the, 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 the retail stores. We sell dry cleaners and macolets, and we sell um, dr uh, all different types of small businesses, but at the same time, we do all, all medium-sized businesses as well. We have uh, manufacturing companies, we have large service companies, uh, distribution, uh, wholesale, retail, you name it. The criteria that we have to take on a client is that they have a positive uh, net cash flow. You mentioned before that you sell businesses to Olim, to immigrants to Israel. Are they the only clients that you work with, or do you also work with Israelis? No, we deal with all different types of uh, immigrants and all different types of uh, people from all different uh, backgrounds. We, most people, believe it or not, in Israel are Israelis. And uh, because of that, we cater to uh, all different pe anybody who lives in Israel. And uh, w to be honest with you, most of our business is actually done with Israelis. My comfort level, of course, obviously, since I'm an American, is with dealing with the Anglo population. And it's much easier for me to speak to somebody in my mother tongue and my Sfatim. But at the same time, um, we, I, in, order, in order to make a deal, you need, it, sometimes you have to deal with people who are out of your comfort level. And I'm happy that, uh, that we work with all different uh, potential people, potential clients. And to be honest with you, most of the brokers in my company, one of the requirements for, me to hire, for them to hire 
to be hired in my company is that they have to speak Hebrew better than myself. Okay, that's a good test. We are speaking with Yisrael Factor, who is not only working on his Hebrew after making Aliyah three years ago, but he is the head of a company called Israel Business Brokers, which helps people buy and sell businesses in Israel. Yisrael has been explaining to us about how, his, how he evaluates a company that a potential buyer might want to buy, but I think a question that people often want to know is, why should they buy someone else's business instead of setting up one from scratch? You know, that's a really good question. Let me present a scenario to you. Uh, you may know of, of a statistic that about 80 to 85 percent of all businesses that start anywhere in the world are, are doomed for failure before they even start. Sure. For many, for many, many reasons. But why don't you take a scenario where somebody has already taken that risk, has been, had their business established for quite a few years, and for whatever reason they're looking to sell their business, could be an illness in the family, it could be they're looking to retire, it could be they just don't have the fire in their belly. But the main point is they've already gone through that startup phase, they've already gone through those risks, and for the same amount of money that you would, to, you would start up a business and go through setting up, a lo finding a location, hiring your employees, uh, purchasing your inventory, and, and opening up your doors, and day one, you don't have any established net cash flow. If you purchase a business and you spend the same amount of money or less, believe it or not, to, uh, to purchase your, an existing business with a ready, available net cash flow, day one after the closing, you're hitting the ground running. So what would be some of the pitfalls that a potential buyer would have to think about before buying a business? You know, that's an, another good question. I'll tell you the truth is that... The pitfalls would be the same as they would be in any other in any other country or any other industry, and, and that would be that you need to before number one you need to have some sort of chain you have to have some sort of talent in order to um, purchase a business in an industry that you're interested in something that that lights your fire for for example, but more importantly the the setback would be that a person needs to fully feel, feel totally comfortable with the fact that the business is, uh, is, 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 um, is profitable. You want to evaluate the business and you want to make sure without any doubt that this business is a good business before you spend the money, you, take, you spend the investment of time, money and energy to, uh, to take over this business. And that's part of what we do. It's part of what we, ha we do to help uh, potential uh, business owners a new business owners in, in, in transacting a new, a new business. Do you look at the historical tax returns and any legal documents? Absolutely. Related to we, spend, we spend quite a bit of time evaluating the business in order to create a presentation to the potential business owner. And of course, you know, for, as a broker, I can't spend all the time that it takes for a buyer to do due diligence. But once we have a buyer who has a, has a real interest in a potential business, we will then spend the time with that buyer um, coordinating the deal, um, helping the buyer ask the right questions, make sure the buyer looks at the right paperwork. If there's any cultural issues, let's say, for example, someone moving from England, South Africa, or the, or the United States to Israel, and they want to purchase a business, we'll help them with all those various different technical issues that they may not think about until they have a full picture of what the business is and what the business isn't. And when a person has the that that hand on the back, for example, they have us supporting them and holding their hands every step of the way. It makes the transition much, much, much easier. And uh, I can tell you that we've been, we, we found that we've helped a lot of people move from, from, from outside of Israel, coming to Israel and, and make Aliyah because they now have the opportunity to make a Parnassal. Uh, would you recommend that people should only buy a company in an industry in which they have experience? You know, it's interesting. Uh, I would tell you that 60% of our clients come looking at one business, and in the end, they usually find a totally different business that they weren't even familiar with that they end up purchasing. So there's a lot of possibilities. You're looking for someone more with the with an entrepreneurial spirit rather than with a specific, you know, specific interest. All right. We've been talking with Yisrael Factor, who started a business a few years ago called Israel Business Brokers in a very specific niche, helping people mostly, I guess, you're saying, who want to move to Israel and then own a business which is profitable. He's been talking to us about not only how you evaluate a business, but who are the right people who should be buying businesses. Israel, we're just about out of time, but in the last few seconds, is, is there a way that people can follow you or follow your work? Sure. You can visit my website at uh, www.essec4u.com. That's E as in Edward, S as in Sam, 
E as in Edward, K as in Kite, the number four, the letter U, dot com. Essek for you. Essek, of course, being the Hebrew word for business. Israel Factor, thanks so much for your time. It was a pleasure, Doug. Speak to you soon. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.